Hello, it's Teresa back. Um, today we're going to be working on a piece of artwork from Paul Klee. Um, some people say Paul Klee, a German artist born in 1879. Before we actually start with the introduction, um, I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, don't do much housekeeping of my own, so it's quite nice for me to use that word in this context and I'd like to say welcome to all our new subscribers and I'd like to thank others for all your lovely lovely comments so here we go it's another list and I'm sure these lists are getting longer by the video bear with me while I run through this list so a big welcome to Hummer Klein Rita Doody, Linda Neal, Raina Schoen, Joe Myron for your comment Joe, Kath Avalon, hello Kath, it's always nice to get your comments, to Glenn, to Chris Jerger, Linda De Concini. Um, thank you Linda, I really enjoyed your story about the soldier and how um, you went into details of how you remember certain things. I really like that and I'm going to use that at some point about the, the sleeping soldier. Um, also, comment from Colorado Blue Skies. Um, you weave in. I think you left a, a comment about weaving and I really enjoyed reading that and I, I just always mention that I love the, the name of your of yourself, Colorado Blue Skies. Wendy Francis Malone, Arn Martin, Deb, Debbie Hulks. Now, I'm not sure, Debbie, if you're the same person as Debbie Hicks. If you're two different people, <laughs> welcome to you both. Well, not welcome, because Debbie, we've our paths are crossed before. But I'm not sure if there was a little bit of a, a printing error there. Um, also, welcome, M Webber 99 jm and once again debbie deborah i've got you down here again and that was for a comment on facebook and thank you very much for that eva villa you mentioned about paul mccartney being your favorite beetle i absolutely agree very very quickly twice a year um i go down to a little place outside where paul mccartney comes from and um when I was driving, I used to go through there and I'd keep my fingers crossed and I'd say, dear God, if ever I need to break down, please let me break down now. Because I always felt that had Mr. McCartney and his gorgeous eyes come out, he would have rescued me. Um, and I always think, even now, if he knew I was divorced, he would, he would actually come looking for me. So Eva, I know exactly how you feel. We live in <laughs> Don't we? Oh dear, I can't carry on there. I'm blushing. Anyway, Tima Hammock, you put some, um, you straighten me out a bit here and I'll be serious. So welcome, Tina. You're a new, you're a new person. Big welcome to you. I'm Ruth Ford. Sarah's Crafty Life, and I love that. Um, Debbie, it's your name again. Deborah H Hulks or Hicks. And you commented on the weeping, Picasso's weeping, we weeping woman. And I, yeah, I love that. I've got 10 out of 10 here. Um, Jane Catherine on books. Therese, Therese, Sin Granelli. Um, yeah, thank you for your lovely comments as well, Therese. Um, they really are appreciated and thank you very much about the channel gro growing and it has it really is growing quite fast and quickly and I'm really grateful to you all for that then we have scrapping rams that's intriguing that I, I like that I wonder if that's something to do with scrapbooks scrapping rams so Humphreys I like this as well you and me God and thank you for your fabulous comment and I believe off the top of my head it was about Monet so thank you very much for that Lisa Swank Artful Inspirations thank you too for your comment this is gorgeous and I mentioned this last time Purple Moon Flower 18 thank you very much Purple Moon or Flower that is so beautiful 
Sharon Mayer, thank you for your, for subscribing, and Sherry P. Mr. Victor Crafter, I was absolutely tickled pink to see that you'd subscribe to me. I've been following you for a long, long time. I actually subscribed to you, and when I saw your name that you'd subscribe to me, I nearly passed out. I nearly fainted. So... Thank you very much for that. I'm absolutely delighted, Mr. Victor. And I just love the work you're doing at the moment with the passports, turning the passports into journals. Um, I'm always intrigued to know where you come from. Are you from the Ukraine? Um, or are you from Russia? Which part? Russia is one place I would love to go to. But I'm thrilled to bits, Mr. Victor or Mr. Crafter, um, that you subscribe to me, and thank you. It's a beautiful name here, Raylin Refrushini. Now, Ray, I hope I've pronounced that properly. Um, that's a gorgeous name. I have no idea where that would come from. Is that Italian? I guess. So that is my list. Um to welcome you all thank you thank you for your comments thank you for joining and uh, it's a pleasure to have you along so we will get on now now today our inspiration as i said comes from paul clay i've got notes here that i'm reading from german artist born in 1879 now this i'm about to show you is a detail from his southern garden work painted in 1919 um, so roughly about 100 years ago it's a watercolour and ink on paper and scraps of paper now this is it now I absolutely love this and I've always loved this because it's so simple um, and it's just a wonderful collection a composition of shapes and colours when we have the lovely contrast which I will be mentioning again we have the contrast of shape one of our design principles we have lovely large shapes here against the small ones here and then these beautiful things flowers flower pots um, and the, the beautiful colours as well and I just think this is fabulous so I can hear you saying yeah okay okay but what are we going to do with it we're going to turn this and make this into a belt now you'll see me doing this again later on this is just crying out it's linear it's practically linear so we're going to fold that like this and that is our inspiration for our belt. I'm just going to switch this light off, see if that makes a difference. There's an awful glare on that screen. So this will be inspiration now for our belt. Now this is the belt we're going to be doing. And it's inspired, don't forget it's not a replica, it's, an ins it's inspired from this. It's not going to be a copy just an inspire inspires as i said we're going to be motivated by it it's a belt which should fit all sizes depending on how long you make it oh it's not even on the screen sorry depending on how long you wish to make it and it has a tie front or a tie back now i'm just going to refer to the this again if you can see there is a similarity going on here it's not exact um, it's not replicated but it you can see the thinking and the inspiration we will crack on and we will start our project hope you enjoy it good luck with it make yourself a cup of tea now or a cup of coffee sit down and just get into it see how it goes now don't forget there's no wrong or right and this this is about you and how you interpret this so nobody can look at your your work and say that is wrong this is about you thinking some of you people my lovely people out there have expressed concern that you're a bit nervous of committing a stitch um, to fabric you're a bit worried and I think and I can't remember who it was a quilter the discipline for quilting and what we do this is an art 
So it's full of self-expression. It's full of what you want and what you're thinking. It hasn't got anything to do with measuring, with precise stitching. We, we use our fabric and thread like an artist would use his paper or his canvas and his palette and his paint. There is no difference and this is what we do. So please, please try and just loosen up a little bit um, and enjoy it. The main thing is that you enjoy it. Okay, so that's my lecture. All right, and we are going to start now. So don't forget the word here is enjoy it. I'll be with you in a second. To begin, now what I've done, I've taken the handles off a calico bag. It was an old calico shopping bag with a picture of Winnie the Pooh on it or something. It was very cheap. I bought it for in Poundland. Um, I actually used it out, but I've been left with these lovely strong handles. I've taken the handle off and this was from the other side. Unpicked it all. And if you see, we have a nice piece of fabric here. Now, I've joined two pieces together, like so. And if I bring this over, this is what I did. Join two pieces together, and you can't even see the join. It is actually there. And I've ironed on violin onto the back and then pressed each edge over towards the back. So these were the fronts. Front, press half an, eight, uh, half an inch in towards the back. And that will give us a basis for our belt. Now, I've also marked an inch mark at the end. So when we do our slow stitch, we're going to, that's an inch, we're going to start at this mark, this pencil mark here, and we're going to finish at this pencil mark here. Now, we're not going to sew on the seam allowance. This will be the seam allowance, the half inch that we've turned in. So when I sew, I'm going to open up here, and I'm going to sew just to the folds by ironing it you're now left with a really nice crease where the seam allowance starts so when I start lie, uh, laying down my fabric for slow stitching hang on a minute there we go I'm just going to take my piece of fabric from that crease leaving the seam allowance and I will finish it at that crease there leaving that seam allowance so you should end up with your sewing between those two trim lines now this fold here the center fold I didn't put that in that is from the original handle where the handle has been pressed here so that is actually sort of remnant of its past it's that part of the handle but it doesn't matter because we're going to sew over that now the length it's the length you want so if you have a gorgeous little waist of 24 inches which i don't you're going to add you'll add 24 inches this will be 24 inches plus an inch either end so you would need a strip of calico and violin 26 inches long this sadly I've made this 30 inches long and I've added an inch either end so this one is 30 inches long plus 2 32 inches long and it should be 3 inches wide 3 inches wide or oh, that's just short of 3 inches make yours 3 inches wide and then turn in towards the back towards the violin was it half an inch did I say half an inch so that will give you half an inch each side an inch so you'll end up with a belt of two inches wide so that will be two inches so there we go that 
is that. Now the next step, I'll just set that aside for a moment. Don't forget we're using scraps. It's all scraps. Don't want you to buy anything. Even the calico. Don't go out and buy the calico. Find something sturdy like calico that you see how strong that is. A strong fabric that will give you the firmness that you need. And the violin, the iron on violin, is going to give you just a bit more strength. Now, what I didn't say, inside there, inside the belt, it will be backed. And inside there, we're going to have some Petersham, some stiffener, belt stiffener, which will give it the nice firm belt effect that we want. So, I'll put that over there. Now, I'm going back to our painting. There's the painting that we're working from. Now what I've done, you can see I've been playing around with bits of folds. Just to give me a rough idea of how the belt will look. So I folded it like so. Um, now that's actually just about two inches. So hopefully we're going to end up with a belt of many colours, a bit like Joseph's coat, <laughs> um, of many colours. And what we want, don't forget when we're designing, we want contrast. One of the principles of design is a contrast. Contrast in colour, contrast in size, contrast in texture. Now, you can see the contrast in size here. It's early Sunday morning and the light seems to be playing on the the table here so hope you can see the, the size of that one the large green size there against the small blue size here there's a small black shape there and if you can see the variety in sizes which makes that interesting because we now have the contrast in size it's predominantly this piece I think is predominantly yellow now don't forget this is just our inspiration so we won't be copying it we're just going to be motivated by it be inspired by it I'm keeping the square shapes rectangles and squares because that is a characteristic of the painting which we want to keep apart from that um, I think mine might be predominantly red not sure yet because as we always say, it's an evolving piece of work. We start off with one thing <laughs> and end up with something completely different. I'd like to keep these, these because these are characteristic of the painting. Turn it that way. Um, but these will put, be put on at the end um, in some sort of stitchery. We'll, do, we'll embroider those. Um, oh, we have one tri triangle there. Oh, two triangles there. Oh, a couple of triangles I don't think I'm going to be putting any triangles on mine I'm going to keep it like this so there we go so if you do print your 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 painting out you could play around with it a little bit see how, what you like you might want to concentrate on big sizes or a certain area you might want to do it that way it's up to you but do bear in mind the contrast we need to make a pleasing design so that's contrast in size this for us is going to be more or less a play around with the contrast in size so stick that to one side and the next bit you've all seen this drum before and you'll probably all recognize those of you who've been following this is one of my scrap drums now as I say, please don't go to any expense of buying anything. This is about scraps uh, and design. It's not about spending money. So these were the scraps that I decided to work from. And I don't think the colours are, are actually a million miles away from the colours on the picture. Lemon. I seem to have pulled out quite a lot of yellow. Uh, red, green, oh that's that's a dead, uh, oh look you can't see, sorry. That is a dead ringer for this colour. So these are the scraps. Now I've already been through these. I spent, oh my gosh, 
maybe two hours on my last night. Yeah, it was quite exhausting actually, because this is the. I have other drums, of like Poundland drums. Lovely. I have other drums, and I went through about four of them, picking out scraps. And by the end of it, I was really tired. But I narrowed them down, and I've already spent possibly two hours this morning just cutting up the tiny bits of scraps and some of these were already cut um, to scraps so these are the what I'm going to use on my belt so as I go along I'm going to be cutting them um, just chopping them because if I don't, at the moment, they're all the same, practically the same size. And we do want contrast in size. So as I go along, I will be trimming these. Perhaps that one might be trimmed into quarters. Or that one might be trimmed into halves. Whatever, whatever. But can't really plan it at this stage. Because as we've always commented on, um, it changes. Now that immediately it's going to change what I put beside it if I had planned oh I'm going to red and grey so already that just changes and I think no that that just wouldn't work but the colours there would work complementary colours red and green but not the size the size wouldn't work so one of them would have to be cut now when you do this just overlay you overlay, you place them as you want. Already we've got a larger side uh, shape there against a narrow one there against this. Now I don't particularly like this L shape, so I wouldn't have that. I would then cover that up with something else. And it's just going to progress like this. Now it's up to you if you tack your pieces. I think what I'm going to do is, as I've showed you here, I'm going to start off with one shape and I will probably tack it down. Now I might start off with two shapes actually and tack them down and then sew them and make it grow that way, I think. But having said that, there's another way of doing it and that is actually tacking them all down just to see the overall effect along the whole belt and then you might think oh no no I don't like this here because it doesn't match what I want to put down here so yes I'm going to have a think about that and as soon as I've decided to tack or not how to do it I shall get back to you as soon as possible Now what I didn't make clear was that you can overlay or you can cut your pieces and you can do both. Um, I had a look back and I thought I didn't make that very clear did I? So whatever suits you, overlay your fabrics or cut them. Now this is a demonstration of laying the pieces onto the fabric and all you're going to do is do as I am doing here and pin them in place. And that's my cuckoo clock announcing that it's now 11 minutes past the hour. But you see how simple it is, how quick and easy it is to put one piece down, then lie a piece of fabric on top, and all we're doing is overlaying your, your little pieces of scraps to something that you like, a nice pleasing design. You might want to change them. The hard bit here is keeping the seam allowance up straight. So just keep the seam allowance out of the way and making sure not to pin that down as well. That's it. Right, so 
going to th um, tack around this to keep all the little pieces in place we've done tacking now dozens of times right straight through the middle now I advise that you don't tack all the way around these shapes as little individual shapes because it will take forever so what I'm doing here I'm just going to tack all the way through the center at first making sure that I've clipped all the shapes so by doing that I've now clipped most of the shapes along the center line they are just the nice big stitches so don't be to worry too much about how neat they are that doesn't matter because they'll come out and then I'm going to go back along the top of that that um, tram line near the tram line again and unfortunately the longer the, your belt the longer it's going to take to do it as I said those of you with a smaller belt small waist won't take long at all but um, those of us with more substantial waist shall we say it takes a little bit longer so now that is the bottom done as well so that's just under the two tram lines so now there are three rows of tacking that's going to hold it in place just tighten that off at the back just secure it slightly and chop it off smash in and then take the tip the pins out and that is what we're going to do on the larger belt that's just to give you a rough idea of how to put the pieces down to pin them and to tack them and that is just how you're going to execute the pieces onto your calico and as you can see those do extend slightly so we'll just push those out of the way and this is how far I've got on the actual belt I've put all my pieces down along the belt it's a bit difficult now to get that it's so long it's difficult to get it under the camera but as you can see the shapes there large shapes against the long shapes and small against the larger ones so that is the contrast in design that we need and there's the back never worry about the back because that's going to be hidden so you can see you get a rough idea of how narrow that's going to be gives you an idea of how the belt's going to look now those overlapping pieces sorry, motorbike those overlapping pieces there are just going to be trimmed off so you don't want to sew those and they'll only get in the way so the easiest thing to do is just trim them off making sure not to snip into the calico fold at this stage it would be so easy just to nick the calico and make a tiny hole in it that's quite a nice thing to do to see those bits fall off and of course those bits unless they're really really tiny aren't thrown they'll be put away and you'll see them again in another project no doubt that's it that's getting nice and strong and sturdy So I'm going to carry on and I should do the same to the other side right the way along just as before so this is the piece now that's all been tacked down I put three rows of tacking or basting right the way along as you can see on the underneath right the way from one end to the other end I've just sort of slide that down a little bit and you can see it curves around there so that is the belt as it is at the moment and this is the painting so as you can see there is some similarity there um, I held it up for my daughter to look at and um, she's probably my greatest critic actually she's a crafter and um, we spent time over the weekend together after the lockdown so 
I mean, it's still locked down, but she's in my bubble. You know, these bubbles we're allowed to have. And it was just so nice having her here. It's absolutely wonderful. She got her cross stitch out and I was doing this. And it was real lovely to be back to some sort of normal again whatever that is now but anyway I did hold it up and I said you know what do you think and she said oh yeah she could see it she said yeah definitely so you know <laughs> it's good enough for my daughter <gasps> believe me <laughs> it's certainly good enough for me and I imagine if you have daughters and I say this with great feeling in my voice if you have daughters you will know just what I mean. Bless them. <laughs> oh, they're lovely, aren't they? But, so back to this. I've also pressed it. And that is why it's lying nice and flat. And I have now pressed the seam allowance open. Because you can see that. I've taken it out from underneath where it was tucked underneath. And now... I've opened it up and this is so now you can see how far to sew so you won't be wasting any stitches now on the seam allowance and you won't be catching the seam allowance in your slow stitch like that I mean it wouldn't really matter if uh, that's my phone I knew that would happen that was my phone um, so you won't be catching the seam allowance here with your slow stitch because by now this is quite thick it's quite thick I did overlay these They've, they're not cut they're overlaid um, so each one is a square um, these some of these narrow ones um, have been cut in half but apart from these these sort of tiny ones the other shapes are um, there's a big blue bit underneath here and there's green square there they've been overlaid so the next thing to do is decide on your stitches. As always, we're going to use the running stitch, the slow stitch. It's up to you entirely if you do this up and down, up and down. That might suit you. My concentration spans a bit on the um, <clears throat> short side, shall we say. So for me, that wouldn't suit me. So what I'm going to do is probably do them in blocks, little blocks or big blocks over two maybe over three in areas even whatever works for you you might decide to take four and up there along there and down that way or you might decide to do one at a time or a bigger a larger area along here all the way down or straight up and down it's entirely up to you the way you work now as always i'm going to practice on here show you just do a little demonstration on here i actually meant to put this on a plain cloth instead of this because sometimes i think this this board detracts from whatever we're doing I might cover it up in future. Right, so here we go. A nice long sharp needle, fine needle with a nice eye. If you can see that. Now I put three strands of thread in here. I'm not going to use three on here, I will use two. But just so the camera picks it up, I've used three. So hopefully you'll be able to see that. With this one, I think I might do it in maybe blocks, those blocks there. So as always, I need to pull that back through the, there we go. So we go in, I'm going to start there. You start where you're happiest starting. And it's the usual small running stitches now if you've just used the tacking stitch or the basting stitch it's just the same only tiny very very tiny but you can lengthen the stitch don't forget the word contrast again long stitches against short stitches fat stitches against thin stitches it all makes a nice texture is that coming out yeah that's coming out up there 
so at this point I could go round there down the edge right the way around the square but I'm not I'm going to go around here and see how that pans out now you might think well what about this won't this flap about no because I'm going to go in round and round and round so each time I come across that's going to be caught right I hope this is coming out as I say this is just the demonstration piece so that you can see what I'm doing I'm actually doing this sideways and it's quite difficult <laughs> to do it this way so there we go and that isn't neat at all but it doesn't have to be and then down here so I'm going to go straight across there down here now the big stitches are actually so you can see them there we go so already on this tiny little demonstration piece it's taking shape so I mean mine's going to take quite a while because it's so long but if you have as I said earlier if you have a neat pretty little waist probably the size of the top of my leg and it's not going to take you long at all. Actually, I should make this for my leg. <laughs> make it for the top of my leg. It'll only take an hour or so to do. She said lying. Doing it for my waist. It's probably take a week. Good job I'm not doing it for my hips. I'd be here six months making up the belt for that. I think as well, while I was ironing this, while I was pressing it, not ironing it, um, this would actually make a nice strap for a bag or for anyone a little bit on the flamboyant side who wears um oh what do you call them braces their trousers i think they'd be it'd be quite stunning now can you see that oh i've gone around there so i've actually gone around what amounts to one two three shapes and i should just Go around there and just keep closing it up. Now as I move along, I might start introducing a few more stitches. I might not. So this will just take its own form completely now. I notice on the painting that it has, the, the shapes on the painting haven't been outlined at all. I don't think so uh, it looks as if one just merges into another so how the paint didn't bleed if that's the case how one color didn't bleed into the other I'm not quite sure perhaps there might be a brown outline around some of them there so that's already taking shape and the thing is although this is a demonstration but it is it is very addictive even this tiny piece here right look over the join there so straight over any little bits that don't match because I can see here already there's going to be oh actually I've pulled it together there was a little bit of a, a gap there but that stitch has actually pulled it together and here look but don't worry because at the end if you have any little pieces like that you can go over it with a fancy stitch or two so don't forget there's no wrong wrong way you can't do it wrong we don't have rights and wrongs it, well we do we have rights <laughs> it's all right so I'm going to carry on with this yes I, I might finish this um, you can see how far I've got with that now this one I might decide to do different I might decide to do it that way just that little square there and then that little square there I might change the color of the thread I might actually continue with some in three strands and that way 
you see how thick that is solid and then do these in two strands and then you're you're beginning to get the texture and the contrast but hey ho I'm going to carry on and as soon as I um, make headway on this I'll get back and show you how it's taking shape so I'm going to curl that up there just so you can see it now and that and there is quite a similarity anyway I'm going to get on and I'll be back shortly I've got as far as this I've slow stitched um, this amount I suppose it's about 12 inches so there's still quite a long way to go but this is how far I am at the moment if I hold that up if you can see that now what I have done I changed my mind about doing boxes um, doing it square I actually cut out a tri um, not a triangle what am I on about a diamond it's a patchwork diamond from a patchwork um, set and I have slow slow stitched around the diamond overlapping changing the direction to get some of these nice sharp lines with the angles which complement or reflect the, the angles on the squares so it's still quite linear and I should just show you how I've done this very very quickly I'll just grab a pin so that is the diamond that I cut out from uh, my patchwork excuse me stretching across and this measures um, it's five centimeters from there to there so widthwise let's get that out of the way widthwise it's five centimeters lengthwise it's um what is that five six seven eight so it's eight lengthwise and five widthwise and all i've done is popped it on now as you can see there's part of a triangle here uh, oh no I keep saying triangle a diamond wake up wake up part of a diamond here but because of the overlapping it has made it's created a little triangle that I'm looking at so just going to pop that on here um, it could be any way I'm going to pop it there now I'll move it up just a bit and then we can get a, a nice point in there move it down there and the colors I'm using at the moment are just two and it's just brown and yellow I like the yellow because there is quite a lot of yellow in this so slow stitch two threads nice long needle with a big eye on there in from the back always knot it I know that's um, debatable but I always knot it in from the back and the nice small running stitches now I'm saying nice small running stitches but I have actually varied the length of the stitch in some places just for added interest not too long and not too sh not too short but just just enough to give it that little bit of interest of oh is, is that a short stitch is that a long stitch but there so that is down there in we go and then along this side this side of the paper here so just following the outline all the way down all the way round it's actually feeling quite firm this bit here that's been sewn um, it's feeling firm it's actually feeling belt like I'm still waiting for the Petersham to arrive from Amazon it's been on order now for a couple of days so I'm quite surprised it hasn't arrived yet hopefully within the next day or two so I can crack on with this and start something new now when you do your slow stitch on this on the belt doesn't matter so much on the picture or on one of our arty pictures that we do but on this 
try not to pull your stitching too tight because if you do that you're actually going to shorten the length of the belt by bunching up the stitches and making them tight you're going to shorten the fabric a little bit so try to keep them um, nice and straight and not tight there we go now just tie that off at the back just loop it under there let's loop it it isn't going to come undone because there's going to be more stitches over that there we go so this is what I've just done let me see if that's on the screen yes so you can see here and down there and there so just stick that back there there we go it's just part of the the diamond and that's all I'm doing now because that's quite a big space there I will now pop that probably that way and maybe so down here to get a nice shape here but at the moment while I've been doing this I'm thinking I might once it's done all the slow stitch is done I might go back and add some maybe feather stitch along some of these to define the shapes now this is just an idea and as you know it's this is an evolving project like all our projects they evolve so that might be part of its evolution to go back and maybe feather stitch along the seams if you like just to make the shapes a bit more defined might also as you know i love using lace and net with some of these shapes i might put a little bit of lace in there a little, little bit of net i might not but these are ideas that are coming into my head as i'm sitting here sewing so it'd be interesting to see you know, i might even leave it like that i mean there's a lot of mites going on isn't there so it'd be interesting to see how exactly it works out so for the time being i'm going to carry on with this all the way to the end and believe it or not it's not taking as long as i thought it would it would take i'm not quite halfway yet let's have a look but i'm not far off nearly there's the halfway mark and that's there the stitches that i've just done so not too not too bad and it's so nice to do you get lost in it so the next time that i come back i should have finished right the way down the end so i'll say ta-ta for now and i'll be back very very soon so this has all been a slow stitched down now the square slow stitched down and they've been feather stitched along the joins as you can see here i only use the two threads the brown and the yellow for the slow stitching and use black for the joins if i just very very carefully try and move this round and then maybe you can get a rough idea of how it's looking so that is how the belt's looking obviously i can't get it under the whole screen but that's how it's looking this was the inspiration okay that way so it's quite that where are we it's quite similar there you go so it's quite similar the next part to do are these here like blocks with the flowers coming out i think on about this length i might put four of these maybe evenly spaced maybe not maybe on the larger shapes i should cut them out and then place them and then take it from there these will be applique so there be that be a piece of fabric sewn on top of this those will be hand sewn so that is my next task um oh i have left the i have left the tacking in actually so that might be um making it look a bit different so i will take the tacking out now the feather stitch i've shown you how to do this before but for anyone who's just popping in and just having a look i'll just go over it again so imagine this is the join this is the join now 
of here the two pieces of fabric together so what we're going to do and bearing in mind I'm using felt big needle and wool for the sake of the camera so you can actually see what's going on so hold the thread down with the left thumb there we go we're going to go into this side now oh sorry there is a knot on the back so I've knotted it I brought the needle through from the back and then hold it down with your left thumb so needle is now going to go in here in this side pointing towards the middle and you're going to bring the needle out now in the middle between the, the joins and this is very difficult to pull through because it's so thick there we go lovely so that's your first stitch and we're going to hold it down again twist that over and we're going to take the needle over here slant the needle like this like so so you have the thread underneath the needle and you're going to pull it with all your might if you're using wool pull it with all your might and that is the second stitch and then you just carry on repeating that hold the thread down with your thumb needle over here down oops just going to move that over so you can see what I'm doing needle over here down towards the center thread underneath the needle and pull it and it will be a lot easier with embroidery thread or cotton and there you go and that is your feather stitch and it's really easy to do it's a lovely effect um, and it's quick as well it's really quick to do so that's a nice little task to do so that is where I am at the moment as I said my next step now is to think about these apply applique in these and doing the feather well not feathers well I suppose they could be the plants the stems stalks leaves whatever you want to call them so I'll get back as soon as I've done that and um, we'll be then ready I think for constructing it putting the ties in I have the the leather waiting for the ties at the end here they're going to be ties Heather Petersham that arrived yesterday and so we'll be ready to construct it then up into a belt so I'll be gone just a second right I'm back it's now Sunday morning and um, I'm freezing absolutely freezing it's 18 degrees out there which I imagine to some of you might be quite warm but to me it's really cold it's overcast and it's a grey old day woke up and it was lovely and sunny so I don't know <laughs> I don't know what happened to the sun but still this is the UK so we could possibly have storms or snow later <laughs> anyway as you can see if you're looking at the screen I've started to put the little pots I imagine they're pots of flowers pots of leaves on the belt now I'm only putting four on because they're quite overwhelming in their own way I don't think this could take more than four there are three of them if you can see those and here is a reminder that is what I'm not replicating but being inspired by inspired by um, there are a variety of sizes of these they're not all the same so I too have used different sizes there's one there's another one now bearing in mind that the top of these will go into the seam allowance so although they look very big or that one looks very big at the moment that part of that will be lost in the seam allowance but that's okay that's a smaller one if you can see that and there's the last one and that's quite a big one so I'm just going to pop those over to one side lovely we're almost getting there now now how did I do those now I started off with the little I'm going to call that a pot 
pot and the leaves I could call those leaves so I started off cutting out the sizes that I want I wanted and as you can see on here the pots are quite small well they're very small actually you can see that that is just the size of my thumbnails <laughs> same color as well um, so and once again this is large on felt and it's all exaggerated so you can see it clearly if I were to do this on the actual pot on the piece of work you wouldn't see it you'd wonder what I was doing so by doing this you can actually see it so you take the flowers or the leaves or whatever you want to put down it might even be feathers so take this bit and you're going to leave that down first okay so this is the bit I'm going to have sticking out of the top of the pot then you take your piece cut your piece for the pot and if you notice this it isn't square there's a little bit missing there it's a bit curved here the same there this one has actually has a round bottom there so it's up to you what shape you do yours now as I said just for the sake of the camera and the demonstration this is going to be my pot so I'm going to pop that down there so already we have a likeness not the same as I said it we're just being inspired this is a likeness and that's good I like that so you're going to pop some pins in there as many pins as you feel confident with just for time I'm just going to pop the two okay now the next step I've done this in stages so that's lovely you know what you're doing where you're going it's looking good so the next step we're going to do or you're going to do is tack it down now as you can see on this one there we go this is the stage first first stage second stage I've removed I've tacked around here you can see the big tacking stitches here so this one would be tacked all the way round and then the pins are removed so that's the next stage now I've decided to do a herringbone stitch now we've done this before on practically well all the videos but for anybody who hasn't worked a herringbone stitch before and I think this is my favorite stitch we're going to do one now herringbone is so so easy it's quick and it's effective now I need to sit around the side here once again this is felt and six strands of thread and a big fat needle with a point on the end and a big eye once again just for demonstration purposes so not going to put a little knot in your thread and you're going to come in from the back okay now you're going to go up it's slanted it's a slanted stitch so you're going to go across to where you want it take a tiny bit of fabric a little bit of fabric there can you see that so I've just picked up a tiny little fabric bring it through and then you're going to take it down to where you want it it's entirely up to you how wide or, na or narrow you have these stitches there so you've picked up a little piece there and now you're going to come back and you're going to cross the legs you're crossing the legs and we do this again slant it wherever you want it how much distance there you might want to make that narrow you might want to make it really wide but I'm going to put mine there so you slant it once again pick up a tiny piece of fabric here you see that oops tiny piece of fabric pull it through keep your thumb on the fabric that you're pulling through because it's liable to knot and then you're going to come down again and this is all herringbone stitch is a little bit of fabric and then we're going to do that again now you can vary it I will probably vary it on my work 
just to give it interest vary the sizes now don't forget we work with contrast and the contrast would be the short against the long so that's one contrast or the narrow we'll do one here let's take it there or we're going to take it there to show narrow practically side by side whoops narrow against the wide you see that against white oh that thread is stranding would you believe it there we go you can do a long against short so some of you might think oh that looks scruffy but look at that it could be grass hay um, it could be waves so there are times when you will need probably in your own work need to work like this I believe we've already worked like this so it's entirely up to you but that's the interest and that's the texture because you have the raised threads here against the flat of the fabric so anyway I'm just going to pop that over there so we're back to this now we've just I've just demonstrated the stitch we're going to use the herringbone let's move that out of the way so you know you've now taken the pins out and you're ready to sew um, I'm going to start here so in from the bottom don't forget to notch your thread so you're going from the applique the piece of fabric that we're adding the applique over to the background fabric okay I hope you can see that there's your stitch slanted and over bring it down and I will make these I will exaggerate these so you can see them on the screen so you're going to pick up a piece of fabric and your needles that way okay although if you're left-handed your needle might be another way it's all to suit you no right and wrong remember that so you're going to pick up a piece of fabric there back to the applique whoops and then over crossing the legs and I'm going to do this all the way round my shape cross the legs back again down pick up a little bit of fabric there and pull it over cross the leg over as wide as you want your stitch pick up a piece of fabric and pull it and that is your herringbone and that's going to keep your applique it's like a little motif nice and flat oh this is quite addictive I could cheerfully sit here and do this all the way around but I won't because I'm eager to start on my little flower pots there on the belt there now at that, this point you could either run that straight across there or you could carry on all the way around here and then come back and do that it's up to you I think I will carry on here all the way around over there Oh my goodness, this is this is such a great fun to do on a Sunday morning. Oh wow. See, I've just made some face masks. Um, got a hospital appointment tomorrow. I was so lucky to get that. And oh, I've had three texts already. Do not, do not forget your face mask. Well, I can't actually wear face masks. Um for various reasons but I've just made some I've just made two in favour of the scarf I wore my scarf as face covering yesterday at the surgery oh my gosh I nearly felt I nearly passed out it was awful for a start I couldn't breathe and then it was hot so I've just sat here and made a couple of cotton ones that I can actually breathe through so I, I'm really pleased and it's still very early 
so there we go now I will carry on all the way around here and then come back and do that okay so the next time I come back these will be firmly sewn down and we'll be ready to construct the belt oh and I still haven't taken the tack in it oh my goodness look at that normally I love taking the tack in out early um, because it just gives such a different look immediately right so there we are it's taking shape lovely and I think can we agree that it is definitely inspired by a Paul Klee and I'm, I'm quite pleased with that so onward and upward and I'll get back as soon as we're ready to construct the belt here we are this is the finished piece now completely finished on the front uh, I'll show you what I've done if you can see here this is one of the flower pots so I put four flower pots on there there's another one there um, another one there um, as you can see it's a bit difficult now <laughs> to show you and another one there so I did those just as I I explained earlier but what I did I've also put some beads on here um, it looked really nice it was okay but there was something missing and I thought I know what I'm going to scatter some cross stitches pink cross stitches here if, if are they coming out yeah and in the center of each I just put a bead now cross stitches very very easy to do we have done these before but I will show you again quick demonstration of cross stitch so not not in the thread so we're going to come in from the back like this this is another stitch that slants so over this way just slant it there so you have a nice stitch going off in that direction now we're going to find the point from there to there where where it meets which is about there and we'll come up through here whoops like so find the point here from there to there from there to there and it's there and we're just going to cross it there we go and that is your cross stitch so we're going to come here one more stitch because I'm running out of felt there over here that way Ugh. over here now you can actually go back through the same hole here if you wanted a nice row of them and that's your next one really really easy to do now if you're doing something like um, a cross stitch embroidery or you're working on linen just doing something a bit more dis disciplined then you would keep them all the same size and they would all be slanting in the same direction notice the top all going in the same direction but because we use this as part of our art and we're about making texture and contrast we can have them any old way we want we can have long ones short ones rough ones smooth ones we can do what we want and just generally play around and have some fun here we go so we're about making texture okay so that is your cross stitch um, what else did I do? So as I said, I've put beads in um, all the way along, all the way down there. Um, to put the beads in, I use a, I didn't use a beading needle, which is a long, skinny, skinny needle. I just used an ordinary sewing needle, one fine enough to go through the bead itself. So that is now finished that is the front I'm tempted to add to it but like so many things it's hard to know when to stop but at the moment I'm really pleased with that I will hang it on the wall for a couple of hours so I can keep looking at it before I make it up 
to make sure I don't want any um, changes to it but I don't think I will actually it's looking a bit boho isn't it I like that look so thank you Mr Clay or Clee there we go so from this to that right next thing I'm going to do I'm going off now to sort out some backing fabric so I want some backing fabric here to line the back and to start assembling it and that won't take very long at all so here we have the belt finished um, I'm going to call it a belt now because that's what it is and as you can see I've got um, oh I've ironed the back or I've pressed the back not ironed it taking care with the beads so I used um, a textured tea towel so the beads would sink into it this is the fabric I'm using to back the bell and this will make it reversible because it's such a pretty fabric and it's strong as well so that will be the lining or the backing now this is leather uh, lacing and it's very strong and it's just ideal for the ties either end of this belt I bought it on a reel from the work some time ago so I don't know if it's the same price but it was actually a bargain I thought just a pound the Petersham don't feel you have to buy Petersham I needed this for something else um, and couldn't improvise but if you can improvise then do so it's just a stiff nut to give the belt a nice stiff belt effect so I'm going to cut, uh, I want my ties 12 inches long, either end. So what I'm going to do is cut two pieces of 24 inches. So each end will have one piece 24 inches, which I'm going to fold in half. So I'm not going to put them in separately. I'm going to fold them in half and put in one tie each end oh if that makes sense goodness that was a cobbled way of saying it so I'm matching the ends I'll match the ends here run right the way down and get the center and there's the loop so each side of that is 12 inches I'm going to carefully place them on the right side of the belt and then pin the lining or the backing right sides together. So you want the right side of the backing on the right side of the belt and pin. You won't be able to pin through the leather probably because it is so thick. But you can pin under and over it just to keep it in place for when you machine sew this down. It makes it so much easier. And make sure that it's edge to edge so you've got the um, the leather right on the edge of your sewing but not creeping into the seam allowance. Goodness, takes some explaining, doesn't it? So we've pinned that there. Now we're going to pin all the way round, right the way round, and it really does need pinning. And and tacking if you feel happy attacking as well because it will slip and slide under the sewing machine foot now I'm going to leave about four inches open on one side now that is to turn the belt in through pull the belt in through after machine sewing it so do make sure you leave a gap wide enough to pull the belt in through so this is the belt now after machine sewing it so that so that the, um, the um, background, background there, there or the back back in fabric there all the way along now this bit here looks a bit wider than everywhere else that's because it needs to be turned under a little bit and sewn but that's after the Petersham goes inside now between the last 
the last um, scene, if you like, where I measured uh, 12 inches and doubled it to 24. Someone came in, so I've had a visitor, who wants the belt, who, who wants this when it's finished, but wants the ties longer. So I've had to make these ties now way longer than the 12 inches. I think they're actually 24 inches. Yeah, they're 24 inches each. So that is why these ties suddenly look a lot longer than they did <laughs> when I cut the ties. They're twice as long. So anyway, this is how far I've got now. The next thing to do is to put the Petersham inside and run it all the way along the length of the belt inside now I'm not quite sure at the moment how I'm going to put that in where is the I can't find a pin so that needs to go inside and it needs to be pushed all the way along so it fits the entire length of the belt and then I'm just going to secure it on the wrong side on the inside with a few little stitches I have to do this blind because I won't be able to see the Petersham it be inside so from this side I will just secure it with a few little stitches and then over so this piece here this part here where the Petersham was put in so that is my next task and as soon as I've done that I'll get back to you and it should be finished oh these little pieces here I'm going to show you a couple of faults things that went wrong on here didn't so much go wrong but I didn't clip it in the seam so if you can see that there's one piece there and there is another piece somewhere else very small very small I know it's there um, so that is why I'm showing you and what I will do I'll do that by hand and do that invisibly by hand and the person who wants it won't even know it's there unless she watches this and I don't think she will <laughs> so I'm going off to do that and when I come back it should fingers crossed be finished let's see here's the finished belt um, complete with ties here the piece the four inches that was left open here has been over sewn and the petersham is inside and that's just what's left it was quite easy to get the petersham in um, i just put it in through the gap there and walked it walked it or pushed it through with a needle so the petersham was inside and from the outside i just walked it up 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 um, and it's quite easy and you can see that is really sturdy and that is just how the belt is so it's quite sturdy now the belt is also reversible it can be used this way because it has a nice very nice lining but we're more interested in the inspiration taken from the painting so here it is there we go so that was inspired by this, uh, by folding this, we then took our inspiration from all the shapes here, the boxes, and translated it into fabric and thread, slow stitch, there's some applique, um, crosses, cross stitch and beads, feather stitch, and now it's finished. So I hope you like that. I hope you enjoyed it. That looks a bit um, scruffy at the moment just because it's on the table, but that will hang down. So there it is. I'm very pleased with this, but more than that, I, ho I hope that you are too. So do have a go. Be interested to see your comments, see what you make of this. Um, and as I say, um, there's already somebody lined up for this. And that's why the ties are so long that's how she wanted them so i'm quite pleased with the response that this has had from people who's already seen it so take care if you liked it please give it a thumbs up um on the end of the the videos there is a big a and that a if you click on that is a subscription a subscribe button i haven't explained that before so 
anyway good luck i'll be back shortly with another um video but let's catch our breaths for a, <laughs> for a day or so so take care um please stick to your social distancing and all the other rules that we are now living by and um, we'll get through this we'll all struggle through and um there is a light at the end of the tunnel but still until the next video take and give it a